Total War Warhammer 3 Patch 2.2 has arrived, and it's a big one. We've got new Regiments of Renown for ELC, character experience reworks, battle type changes, unit balancing, victory tweaks, adjustments to AI and difficulty, a brand new endgame, and of course, bugs getting squashed. So, no time like the present, right? Starting off with a big one, we've adjusted the frequency of unwalled settlement battles in Total War Warhammer 3. All major settlements will retain their walled settlement battles, but now minor settlements will trigger land battles by default. If the settlement has a tier 2 or tier 3 garrison, then the battle will take place on a minor settlement map, but otherwise the battles will take place on a land battle map, to help break up any map monotony. While we're on the subject of battles, experience gained in combat has also been reworked. Victory type is no longer a part of the calculation. Instead, experience is granted based on a combination of the enemy army's value and proportion of that enemy army that's been destroyed. Essentially, if you destroy 80% of an enemy army, you'll gain the same amount of experience even if you gain a heroic victory or simply bloody the enemy's nose with a valiant defeat. Heroes also gain around 50% more experience from participating in battles, putting their progression more in line with Lords. We've also reworked channeling and Winds of Magic replenishment across Wood Elves, Vampire Coast, Greenskins, and the Beastmen. Wood Elf major settlements grant Winds of Magic reserves per turn. Abducting captives also grants additional Winds of Magic. And I won't ask questions about that if you don't. Beastmen now gain Winds of Magic reserves while raiding and earn even more during Full Moon and Eclipse events. The Vampire Coast now gain magic while in the flagship expansion stance. Norska can gain magic while in the raiding stance, which can be further bolstered by devoting to the Eagle. And now Greenskins earn Winds of Magic depending on their current WAR level. Also, Nakai can now channel. Good for them. Lastly, with Dwarfs, we fixed their grudge severity from increasing far too quickly. They'll still get angry, but they'll be disappointed for a bit longer. Which might still hurt just as much when you think about it. On a happier note, we've got new monstrous regiments of renown making their way to the battlefields. For Grand Cathay, we've got the Green Guardian. Kislev have unearthed the Frozen Heart of Winter, and the Ogre Kingdoms have got themselves the Snowhorn of Morn. Over with the Chaos Armies, Korn's bloody fist has arrived. Your fun uncle, Uncle Faruncle, has come bringing Nurgle's gifts. The Golden Griffin of Theurgy brings the Lore of Metal to the Lord of Changes spell arsenal. And from the far reaches of experience, the Marquis of Masochism is here to feast on fears in the name of Slanesh. No tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. AI aggression and difficulty have been reworked for patch 2.2. Namely, we've made the AI more aggressive in this patch. The AI is now more likely to attack around settlements, and during sieges they'll use more immediate forms of entry. After all, why use a ladder when the gate's open, right? Agents are also less likely to just clump around areas now, and are more likely to be embedded in armies, meaning that Patriarch and Skaven are less likely to loiter aggressively near each other. There are more details on the changes to the AI on the blog post. These changes will need feedback, so please do let us know what you think about them on our official channels. Victory conditions for certain factions have also changed in patch 2.2. Starting with the High Elves, Teclis now starts off in the Fortress of Dawn, and his victory objectives now see him needing to gain control of the majority of Elven colonies, as opposed to just fully controlling Ulthuan. Imric's objectives now see him needing to go on tour, encountering all the dragons as well as destroying nearby Chaos, Skaven, and Greenskin factions. Elthari and the Grim's short-term goals involve him dealing with Athel Tamra, whilst also dealing with nearby Greenskins and Khorne. Meanwhile, Marcus Wolfheart's long victory now targets locations in Lustria, as opposed to the Empire, which should hopefully make Festag less awkward. Sticking with Lustria, we've also changed up some conditions for the Lizardmen. Krokgar's long victory now focuses on the elimination of forces of destruction and chaos, whilst protecting the nearby jungles. Nakai's long victory sees him dealing with Clan Pestilens and Servants of Darkness in the East. Oxyotl, meanwhile, has had fixes to Visions of the Old Ones, 
ensuring extremely strong armies won't spawn in the early game. Also, his short and long victory conditions have changed, with the short term condition being completing 6 medium to hard visions missions, and his long term victory being 25. And quickly while we're here, Lord Croak's deliverance of Eats a spell now has cooldowns, which he looks excited about. Finally, Scarbrand's short victory reward has changed, considering he was less than happy with getting Winds of Magic. So now he'll earn himself a Chainsword, which, oh wow, Chaos Christmas came early. Now for something he and you should be excited about. For multiplayer, we're adding separate ranked matchmaking queues for domination and land battle, alongside other bug fixes for multiplayer campaigns. And finally, we've got our brand new endgame scenario, Vermintide. In which, um, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens. There's no mass upheaval of giant man-sized rats causing havoc, as there is simply no such thing. Man-sized rats. <laughs> Ridiculous. Someone tell this lot over an Uber's right, yeah? So that's a quick look at some of the changes coming with Total War Warhammer 3 Patch 2.2. As always, your feedback is completely welcomed, so please do let us know what you think of the changes in the comments and on our official channels. For a more detailed breakdown of everything coming with Patch 2.2, such as some small Lord reworks and faction adjustments, do go check out the blog. There's a link in the description. And if you do happen to see a man-sized rat, maybe keep it to yourself, yes, yes.